I was born into a world of white space. The noise, the sound, the atmosphere, white space. Others, they incubated in shadow-filled worlds, unseeing, unknowing, unthinkable. At the time, these were foreign concepts, untouchable objects, ineffable thoughts. Of all the dark corners of humanity, in all the unreachable places of consciousness rested the dreamscape, a realm of fancy impenetrable by my peculiar focus. Until one day, I drifted into the shadow-filled world, a dreamscape absent of time. I watched vast kingdoms ascend and war-filled destruction sweep across the lands like wind-blown leaves through an oak forest. They covered the globe from east to west as lichen on river-crest boulders. Kings rode mounts, crying words of vengeance, charging forth into battalions of men sworn enemies of one another, sworn to die for the body politic of the moment. As kings waged war, queens wrote letters, treaties after treaties, imploring the other side to draw themselves closer in the common cause, to bring peace to the lands, to build upon what unites rather than what divides the peoples. I would wake from these disassociations, these convoluted machinations, suffering a disconnection that left me questioning where I was. After the first few dreams, my surroundings flooded in sharply. The white space returned with no effort. The cognitive milieu between then and now lasted brief moments, hardly noticeable. But increasingly, this chasm between dreams, the shadow-filled world and the white space of my everyday life widened, and the effort to bridge this gap became arduous. The tenuous bridge constructed of grayness and the breach of these incoherent worlds was quickly discarded once I had made it across. Between the there and now, I would linger ever longer at the intersection, pondering the interconnection, the interdependence, the surjective tendrils which spanned from the white to the black. Ever longer, I remained within the bifurcation of the stark and mirrored contrast, at the periphery of my senses immersed in the grayness. The grayness appeared as a maze, and I was liquid flowing through its hollows, traversing far and wide until an exit was located and I re-entered the white space. Each time I traversed the maze, I realized further that its manifold of corridors and entryways were shifting in my presence. Entryways would close, compartmentalizing my fluidic thoughts, trapping pieces of me from the whole, and panicked, these thoughts would freeze, solidifying, and the maze would remain static for a moment. The meandering thoughts traversing this maze, seeking a goal, led inexorably to the conclusion that the maze's form was indistinguishable from the silhouette of thoughts that flowed through its halls. There existed only a question of phase, which parts were stable and static, which parts were fluid. I did not know, cannot know. And then, I understood the shadow-filled world. And then the dreams, they become reality. And then the dreams, they became the white space. And everything changed, and everything began. And all I could think, all I could say, that dreams shall come to those who wake. <laughs>